Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another video. In today's episode, I will be sharing with you another tip for building microservices in Go, specifically the repository pattern, services, and dependency injection. This video is using as a reference the previous one I recorded that was covering domain driven design and the project layout. Uh, the link to that one will be in the description if you haven't seen that one yet. One of the things that I want to just mention right away is that regarding dependency injection, I won't be discussing the two packages I have on the agenda, which are the Google Wire and Uber Go Dig. I like uh, not using those kind of packages. I like to define the dependencies that I need when instantiating all the types that I need to instantiate explicitly or as explicit as possible so i just want to get that out of the way we're going to be discussing like i said the repository pattern the services specifically the domain service and the application service and all of these with a concrete example that involves the previous project that is called that is discussed in the previous video the to do application with all of that being said let me show you how the repository pattern works the idea of having a repository or using the repository pattern is to have a layer between a data store whatever that is and the domain that you are defining the domain that we are going to be using is obviously a to do list application kind of uh, implementation there are a few types that are defined on the the internal uh, package that basically build the type called the task type in more importantly uh, or the important thing about this type is that some of these uh, types that are used as fields have their own uh, logic or business logic and is basically explicitly indicated by a by a method called validate so the task type has a validate that happens to be also calling the priority type and the date uh, dates type uh, their validate func they their validate methods as well not only that, but also uh, the, depending on the documentation, some of them some of them indicate some other rules that we have to follow. I want to call that out right now because in the future, with the videos that will be adding, those will be also implemented as well. With all of that being said, let's jump into the repository pattern that it actually uses SQL C, which is one of the th uh, one of the packages that I was discussing as well in my previous video. If you haven't seen those three specific videos, again, I will have the link in the description so you can check them out later. Specifically, what is happening right here is that I'm defining three three different uh, functions uh, that are allow uh, that allow us to create tasks, uh, select tasks, and update tasks. Brace their forward, and with SQL C, it allow uh, after running the code generate that it happens to be uh, in this file it will allow it will build all the code that we need for actually interacting with the database in postgres which is right here so all of this is auto generated for us we don't have to do it what is important about the repository pattern is to define concrete uh, a concrete interface or a concrete uh, methods that are going to be receiving types that live in the domain package nothing here outside of the public interface is using sql related types if you notice that create method for example is using the strings the internal type priority and then internal type dates and happens to return the task similar situation happens with the find that it receives a string which is id returns a task and returns an error and a similar situation with the third method which is update which receives again use domain types nothing outside of that this is pretty straightforward sort of like crud like uh, interaction with the database what is important is with the second thing that i wanted to discuss which is which is the services in this case in the context of domain driven design and more specifically with the layout that we're using in go the service defines the interaction between the business logic the business rules that we have and the repository layer and the repositories and therefore the data stores and the way it works is that the service itself re uh, receives as a way to in to, in to be instantiated a repository that is defined as an interface type 
and this is the important bit of the layer that we're implemented implementing in the in through the or via the repository pattern through the postgres package postgres sql package is that it allows to separate those two layers uh, explicitly not only is it useful for testing purpose purposes but also for explicitly uh, allowing interacting different database d different repositories with the domain logic that we need to define in their service right now this is a really pretty straightforward implementation we are literally just calling the function that is defined in the repository for create we're calling create for find for task we're calling find for update we're calling update but think in terms of what happens if we have uh, an application service that has this domain, this logic that happens to be interacting with different repositories for with different data stores, different data stores. This is the way to connect all of that. Now, how is this being used in, in, in the end when we are instantiating all of this? We need to jump and look at the final uh, binary that I have right here. That is literally connecting all of that. We are instantiating a data store from the Postgres package called task, which is doing the CRUD like uh, functions or methods. It's the one inserting, selecting, and updating in, in SQL. That one is passed in as an argument. That is where the dependency injection actually happens. And we use that through the example. It's a pretty straightforward example. We are creating a new task where we are updating it and then we are finding it and they print out the result. If we run that, I want to show you the database first. There is nothing in the database. Um, it's empty. If we run the example, you will see that it's actually doing what I was just telling you. It creates the record right here and it updates the record so right here if you notice is new task the description and it's changed to change task the priority is one and it's changed to priority three which if i believe it, this is low and this is high and the, the due date also changes if you notice that right here so this is because again these are the things that we decided to change and these are the things that we're passing down from the uh, interface that we have right here, which is a CLI, passing that down to the implementation and application service, which is the service package, and then passing that down to the actual repository layer that is defined in the Postgres SQL package. Now, this is the beginning of the actual implementation. All of this is really simple and it will start to make sense when again when the things when things get complicated you might be thinking all of, all of this is way too much work but all of the all of this um, will pay off in the long run in the long run you, you have to trust me on that and with all of that being said um, I will be continuously updating the code with more videos updating what I was just describing you adding more layers, more changes, more changes to the original project layout that I was discussing previously. And I will keep you updated with obviously with the changes and whatnot. With all of that being said, I hope uh, all of this is more or less clear. If it's, if it's not, just leave a comment. I will do my best to answer your questions. And as usual, I didn't mention this, but the code will be also linked in the description as well. With all of that being said, thank you for watching and keep it up. I will talk to you next time. Until then, take care.